And we'll end with one last example for this section. Um, so this is similar to the previous example. We have a function. We want to find the critical numbers. We want to classify them as a relative max, relative min, or neither. And so in principle, it's exactly the same. But this problem is one that's challenging for a lot of students um, simply because people tend to be a little bit rusty on their algebraic skills when it comes to things like fractional exponents. So we'll go through this one slowly, and we'll be careful about the algebra. We'll make sure that we have all the pieces in place so you see how this works. Okay? So again, if we, if we want critical numbers, we need derivatives. Right? This function is defined for all real numbers. So first thing we've got to do is compute f prime and see where it's either 0 or undefined. So we can use power rule, right? 8 over 3 comes down, x to the, so if we're subtracting 1 from 8 thirds, right? So 1 is 3 thirds. So 8 thirds minus 3 thirds leaves us with 5 thirds minus 4 times 2 thirds. 2 thirds comes down, subtract 1. So 2 thirds minus 3 thirds leaves us with negative 1 third. Okay? So what we have is, now, there's an 8 over 3 that we can factor right out, right? 8 over 3 times x to the 5 thirds, right? 4 times 2 thirds is also 8 thirds. Now you've got a couple of options. Some people are comfortable with factoring out a negative power. Um, if you are, you can do that. So if we bring the x to the minus 1 third out front, well then, that's just going to be minus 1, right? Because we multiply that through, we get the minus x to the minus 1 third. What should go here? Well, we need something so that when we multiply by x to the 1 third minus 1 third, we get x to the 5 thirds. So we say, what subtract a third gives us 5 thirds, 6 thirds minus 1 third gives us 5 thirds, 6 thirds is 2. So we have x squared minus 1. Um, now, if that threw you off and you didn't really see how that worked out, um, the other thing you can do is remember that negative exponents uh, can move into the denominator, right? So we could also write this as 8 over 3, x to the 5 over 3 minus 1 over x to the 1 over 3. Okay? And now, if we want a common denominator, we should multiply top and bottom here by x to the 1 third. So we should write this as 8 over 3, x to the 5 thirds times x to the 1 third minus 1 over x to the 1 third. Of course, it's going to give you the same result as we have up here. right? So whichever way you do it, ultimately what you're going to end up with is the following. You're going to have 8 times x minus 1 times x plus 1 over 3 times x to the 1 third. Okay? Now that's interesting because what we get from here is we get that f prime of x equals 0 at x equals 1 and minus 1. But also, f prime of x is undefined at x equals 0. And this is a critical number, right? Because f of 0 is defined. f of 0 is 0, right? So that is a point on the graph. Um, so we have a critical number where the derivative is undefined, which is interesting. We haven't seen too many of those. OK, so now that we've got our three critical numbers, we do this first derivative test analysis on each of them to see what we're dealing with. So we draw our number line, like so. We mark off our critical points, minus 1, 0, 1. Okay. Now we have to work out the sign in each interval. So if x is bigger than 1, plus, 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 everything is positive, right? So we're, we're increasing. Uh, between 0 and 1, 
negative, positive, positive. Overall negative, and we're decreasing. Um, between minus 1 and 0, uh, the cube root of a negative is defined, and it's negative. So if, if we're in this region here, negative, negative, but this is still positive. So two negatives make a positive. Okay, we're increasing. And finally, if we're less than minus 1, this one is going to become negative. Now all three factors are negative. Three negatives right, gives you a minus, odd number of minus signs. So we have something that looks like this, decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. Right? So we're increasing on minus 1 to 0 and 1 to infinity. We're decreasing on minus infinity to minus 1 and 0 to 1. Um, finally, we have a relative min at minus 1, f of minus 1. What's f of minus 1? We can probably work that out, right? Um, minus 1, these are even powers, so that's going to be 1. 1 minus 4, minus 1 minus 3, and 1 minus 3. And there's going to be a relative max at 0, 0. Okay? All right. So we've, we've found the three critical numbers. We identified them, relative minimum, relative maximum, relative minimum. Right? And from here, we can move on and we can start actually getting an idea of what the graph of this thing is going to look like, right? Um, so there's going to be a, a minimum that looks like this, coming up to a maximum that looks like that, down to a minimum that looks like that, right? And then from there, we'd have to figure out, well, what happens as x goes off to infinity? And, well, it should work out that we get something that looks like that, right? With axes in there. Um, so feel free to confirm on a graphing utility that you do indeed get something that looks like that.